Hello everyone, uh, I'm Sotaya and uh, this is my first program tutorial. So today I'll be talking about recursion and we're going to be seeing some sample codes. But first of all, what is recursion? A lot of people have asked me this question and why it's important, uh, but the simple thing to say is that recursion is a, is a method of solving a problem in which we divide that problem into smaller segments of its own kind and solve them individually then after incorporate everything back together giving us our result now why is this uh, useful now if we talk about uh, if you start talking about binary trees you know linked list and you, you are trying to go through every single item in this in this particular place or let's take for instance you want to search for an item in your on your system now you have several directories and those directories have have subdirectories and also they have parent directories now how do you efficiently go through all these directories to check for that one way to do is through recursion because it goes from one step to a deeper step and at each case evaluating the the problem or the algorithm that you are uh, doing so i'm going to be showing some practical example and uh, today we have, i'm going to talk about uh, factorial mainly because it's the most common problem that uh, factorial is being used and I'm going to state some very important things you should note when you are using recursion because recursion needs to be handled very very carefully if misused it can land in a very very big trouble so first of all uh, let's see the point that I'm saying uh, recursion is uh, it has two major things that you have to understand one is the termination. We have to terminate a recursion when it's due. If we don't terminate a recursion, it might crash your system, fill out the memory until your system will not be able to hold it. You know, and if this kind of uh, code is incorporated in a software, then your system will always be crashing, and your users also they won't be able to use efficiently your software because it will always be having problem. So uh, let me show you an example of what I'm saying now. If we are going to write a, uh, if we are going to use recursion to solve factorial, for instance, let's take a, let's define a function factorial, yeah, that takes in a number, and uh, once it takes in a number, this is a recursion, but we type a terminating sequence. Now I'm going to return the number multiplied by. I'm going to call my function again. So, if, uh, in fact, in recursion, the function call itself, and the, and the call function call another until it gets to the depth that it has exhausted, then returns the final value all matched together. So, in this case, uh, it's going to call itself, multiplying itself by the previous number. So, factorial. And it's going to call itself but in this case it's not just number it's the next number lower than that number that we multiply with which is number minus one so here if I uh, finish my function here and uh, let me call this. this is not an it is not a good method of recursion because this has no terminating sequence and it will keep running until your memory cannot handle it anymore or in these cases uh, some of these languages nowadays they have a certain level that when a recursion gets to it uh, gets too deep and it's terminated automatically so let's call our function and see factorial and uh, let's pass in a minimal number let's say three and see what happened so you see that uh, it kept running 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 without end until there was a runtime error maximum recursion depth exceeded so uh, these languages have have a maximum recursion depth that they can get so how do we solve this this problem that is causing now a way to solve it is to make sure that it terminates when it gets to a particular point now let's define the function again factorial it takes in a number and when it takes in a number first we have to consider the case of if one or zero is passed. You know the factorial of one and the factorial of zero are all one. So let's check and see if 
um, number it's equivalent to one or number it's equivalent to zero what should we do oh i'm sorry about that let's uh let's do that again now we define a function factorial with a number now if number is equivalent to one or number is equivalent to zero we return one right else what do we do we return number multiply by factorial of number minus one now we have this all checked out so what why do we need this first uh, instance of number equals to one or number equals to zero so the the point is that when our factorial gets deeper it, get, it keeps subtracting from number when it gets to one our else is not executed but our if our if condition becomes true so it now returns the value so this is why uh, this terminating sequence of the first of the first if of the first if statement is good sorry guys I'm a bit tired today I've worked a lot so let's let's see this in action now factorial of let's pass in 4 for it and see 24 and definitely as yes, factorial of 4 is 24 so let's try and pass uh, something let's say a negative number minus 3 and see what will happen Ooh, la la okay our system crashed again so not system crash but our program crashed so uh, now let's uh, modify our code in order to check for instances of negative numbers so we check again factorial it takes in a number and uh, it checks if the number If the number is less than zero, what do we do? Let's say we return zero, right? Yeah, that's a uh, fairly good solution. Else if the number is uh, equal to one or the number is equivalent to zero, Oh, what again? Sorry, guys. Factorial of a number. I always forget the column. I code in uh, a lot of languages, and uh, sometimes, you, you know, I use uh, I use functions without. You see, I'm even putting the brackets in Python. Oh, I'm horrible. If number is uh, less than zero. We return zero number it's uh, equal to one or number is equal to zero we return one else <coughs> we return number multiply by factorial of number minus one right let's see if everything is okay okay if i'm not blind then uh everything is good so let's put this into test and see factorial of the number one will return one of course of zero will return zero one of course because it is of a negative number will return zero because uh, we can't calculate that obviously and for five will return 120 
So this is all about uh, uh, recursion. If you know, you can make uh, complex algorithms uh, for problems and all you need to do is to have one algorithm, you divide the problem into segments and use that same algorithm over and over again to calculate those and at the end everything is put together and uh, your value is being returned. Recursion can actually be very very useful but sometimes it can be bogus because uh, when there are too much level to go in it can consume memory and uh, make sometimes your program slow a bit so uh, you should know when to use what yes there are iterations too but in terms of iteration solving this would have been uh, a bit more complex but you see recursion actually simplified it but recursion some people take recursion to be very very difficult but recursion is actually simple if you understand it but yeah yeah so I, I believe that this little video here helps you understand and uh, I'm going to be making more videos so uh, if you like this video you can sus subscribe below and uh, also you can write me a message on things that you wish I should give tutorials about and I will try my best to do that so this is all I have today and uh, thank you guys for listening uh, bye